So, uh, well, I guess I could welcome you all in this morning. Uh, welcome to Broken Change Church, where God is alive and well and moving by His Spirit. Amen. How many came to hear a word from God this morning? Amen. Me too. I sure hope He shows up. <laughs> I brought Him with me. You did. <laughs> all right. Just so you know, we don't, I don't want to get it you confused or so you know I'm his favorite. Just <laughs> so am I. <laughs> Funny, everybody says that. <laughs> amen, amen. How's everybody's week been going? You have a good week last amen. week? Amen. Seems like we haven't been together in a month of Sundays and we've had weather and weather and some more weather. Uh -huh. Amen. But uh, it's good to be with you today and... Uh, if, you, if you're not my Facebook friend, you can add me. If you don't know the church has a Facebook page, it does. If you didn't know the church has a website, it does. If you didn't know the church had an app in your Play Store, go to your Play Store and Google it. You can get it there and so you can get all the sermons and all those things to any of those places. That's a multitude of places to find. And then uh, if you add me as your Facebook friend, uh, plus I shared it to the church page. I put out a little blurb last week. Uh, pretty much just the message but really concise so I encourage you to go listen to it I believe it'll minister to you and today I don't have any sermon notes so you know we should be out of here early yeah. <laughs> see what happens <laughs> everybody's going to remember that sermon forever I can tell you. how many I bet y'all ain't saying that to God so much no more but what happened was yeah, you're going to get a shirt that says that. Yeah. Well, what happened was, is I met Jesus and it forever Amen. changed me. Amen. 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 Well, this morning I'm going to talk a little bit about hope. Does anybody like hope? Oh, yeah. Amen. And for years, though, I really had a miscued uh, way about it. See, how the world views hope, hope and how God views hope is two separate things. I mean, I used to hope I would get that new Harley. I, you know, I used to hope that Pastor Tammy would have mercy on me and say, he really needs this, you know. But, you know, that's wishful thinking. And God's kind of hope isn't wishful thinking. When you look at the word hope in the Greek, it means confidently anticipating. That means you're sure of. So that means that you believe the promises of God. So faith reaches in and brings the unseen into the seen, right? Hope is what it takes for you to reach in while, during that waiting period where you're bringing it from the unseen into the seen. So you're confidently anticipating that promise that you've latched on to by faith that you're bringing it on in and you're believing that God is who He says He is. He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. Amen. And the promises of God are yes and amen. Right. Amen? amen? Does that sound like a lot better hope? Now listen, I could try to apply biblical hope to my Harley, but I can't find any <laughs> scriptural foundation for that. Other than, you know, He lays up the wealth of the wicked for the righteous, maybe. And, you know, He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. He gives us the desires of our heart. <laughs> desires of our heart. But each time I say those things, he's like, he says, don't you got some better use for that money than that? Yeah. But one of these days, you know, I, I may get that. But uh, I've been a good boy. I even rode a gold wing for 500,000 miles. Hadn't been on the, on the Harley forever. My old gold wing, it, 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 it's starting to show. It's getting old and tired looking, but it still runs. Amen. Amen. And if you ride, oh uh, we have another ministry called Spirit Riders International. We got members and several states, several countries, and the main thing is, is uh, we're just trying to show people Jesus. Amen. And we'll be actually taking some rides out of this chapter this year, so uh, we'll be looking forward to that. But today I came to talk to you about hope, because how many know you have an enemy of your soul? Now, I don't like to give him much credit, but there's a verse that says he came to wear down the saints. Amen. And so, anybody ever watch boxing or fighting or ever been in a fight? Or maybe that's just I'm a guy. That's what I can relate to. But, you know, some guys, they, they, they play the, the part and they, uh, they'll they wear the other guy out by letting him beat on them for a while. They just not let him get any good shots in. You know, they'll 
put their hands up. They'll take a, maybe a few body blows. They'll take them here or there just to wear the guy out. And see, Satan, he, he, he's, too, he's too dumb to be smart enough to know that he's already lost. So he will, uh, he will come in and try to wear you down. Amen. Now the Bible says that uh, no weapon formed against you shall prosper, right? And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, he shall condemn. But notice it didn't say that no weapon would ever be formed. Right. By the way, we will open our Bibles here in a minute. We are a word church. <laughs> In case you didn't know that by all the sheets you get every week full of the Word. But, you know, He wants to wear you down. but And He will form weapons against you. You know, sickness is one of His favorite things to use. He loves giving sickness because most people just accept it. I mean, we've got a whole doctor system. I'm not knocking doctors. God gives man wisdom. He talks about it in the Bible. But, he, you know, He just, as soon as if you'll accept it, then what kind of hope do you have? I mean, you're just dealing with something. Anybody here, uh, how about whenever you're, anybody's heart in here ever get heavy? Everybody ever had a broken heart? Dealing with something? The enemy wants to convince you it'll always be that way, but Luke 4, 18 says he came to heal the broken heart. He came to set the captives free. He came to uh, give labor to them that are bruised. And he came to proclaim deliverance. And that's because it's a choice to receive deliverance, but it's a whole other message. <coughs> Are y'all with me yet this morning? Yep. So the enemy loves to come in and, do, and try, what's he trying to do? Steal your hope. Your hope. We're going to get to the joy in a little bit. It's coming. You're right on track. And so, because when he steals your hope, it, it does affect your joy. It affects your peace. And it affects your faith. Because when you're not confidently anticipating it, you may still be anticipating it, but if you're not confident, you start getting shaky. Mm -hmm. That's why he really starts coming after your hope. And he doesn't even care if he, if he, if he starts undermining on, the, on things that you may find minor. Listen, God doesn't find anything, count anything minor. But it, then all of a sudden, it'll start affecting your big things, you know. Well, I'm just doing the best I can, you know. How many know the blessings of God? They maketh one rich and they add no sorrow. Amen. Now notice I didn't say that he made you a millionaire. We're not, we're not preaching false gospel around here. The blessings of God, that means physically, spiritually, emotionally, and financially, he will bless you. And he's going to bless you in such a way that it adds no sorrow. And guess what happens when you get a blessing that doesn't add sorrow? It starts making you pretty hopeful. Anybody ever had something they prayed for? that it started coming to pass and it gave them hope for something else. Amen. Maybe if it was a simple thing, even all of a sudden you start thinking, man, I really think I believe this God stuff. I think this stuff's working, man. I think I'll just go ahead and believe for that next thing too. And then all of a sudden it seems like you've just had a week or you've had a month or maybe you've had a year or two years where just everything you do is just feels like it's up against the grindstone. And you... You haven't even dared to hope anymore. You're just trying to feel like you're trying to stay alive. And uh, I've got good news for you then this morning. If you have a Bible, you can turn to Proverbs chapter 13. Or we can put it up on the big screen maybe. Verse 12. Proverbs 13, verse 12. I've been handing out sheets so long, I forgot how to. You get, they say you got to say it three times for people to get it. Proverbs 13, <laughs> verse 12. That's what they teach you. Yeah. It says, uh, Hope deferred maketh the heart sick. And boy, if I stopped right there, I could get shouted down. That's right. Because I mean, you know, when your hope gets deferred, it just makes your heart sick. You just become heartbroken. But I want you to notice something here. He said deferred. He didn't say stopped. Because right. the end, God is the God of hope. We're going to look at that in a minute. He's the God of hope. Okay? So the enemy can defer hope, but he can't stop hope. That means he can stop. Maybe he can put something on you for a little bit, or maybe he can even block something from happening for a little while. 
Just like Daniel was like, where are you at, God? And, and the angel was like, listen, I've been fighting Lucifer for four days. I got delayed, but I did not get stopped. But most people start thinking of delay as denial, and delay is not denial. And that's because, and the enemy, he tries to steal your hope during the delay. And then you move on and believe it's denial. And then you stop applying faith to that thing you were trying to acquire. Faith is a substance hope for the evidence of things not seen. That means I reach over here in the faith realm. That means it's just as fact over there as it is here. I just can't see it and i got to bring it over there. But I reach over through hope, confidently anticipating those promises that I read are true. Come on, are you with me? But the enemy works. He loves to defer your hope. And he, he wants you to, you're just going to give it a little bit. It says, hope deferreth, make the heart sick. And everybody usually would shout you down right now. You say, I felt that before, Pastor. I know what that feels like. But I love the next part of this verse. It says, but when the desire cometh. You notice it didn't say might. It didn't say it could. It said, but when. See, if you will stay connected to God, it, listen, and some people say, well, I've known people that believe in it went on to heaven. Well, I can guarantee they're whole, well, and dancing up there. Amen. But I'm never going to accept sickness. I'm never going to accept all the attacks of the enemy. Amen. I'm going to be, believe it, either here or heaven. It's not my job to decide when and where. It's my job to stand in hope and bring, reach over and bring it from the unseen into the seen in my life. And nobody's going to convince me otherwise. So that way I'm going to feel, I'm going to stay full of the joy and the power and the peace of God. I'm not going to let go of those things that keep me and maintain who I am. How I many know God never said he would take you out of problems, but he said he'd give you joy and peace through them. Amen. But see, when your hope starts getting deferred, you start losing joy and peace. Come on, are you with me this morning? So he said, uh, but when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life because see these moments that you think are meant to destroy you are meant to actually start maturing you as a Christian and start putting your roots down deep in the tree of life and get into that river of living water that so that you cannot easily be swayed at the attacks of the enemy Come on, are you all seeing that? But so the enemy wants you to focus on the attack, not what you're gaining through. But the more that you stand in faith and believe when he comes and tries to defer your hope, the deeper your roots go. Mm -hmm. So the next time you're not so easily shaken. Come on, are you with me? Yes. And so I came to give you good news this morning that if you're going through something, it's because God is believing he's maturing you. And, he, and see, when a tree starts maturing more, it starts producing more fruit. And it becomes more beneficial. Come on, to the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, the fruit grove, uh, what's it called? Uh, anyways. No, the, <laughs> Sister Kathy, she owns a whole orange grove and they, they produce, but the more the grove produces, the more the whole thing yields. And how I many work one body together, and the more fruit you produce, the more the output it comes. So, uh, anyways, uh, the Lord, uh, but so many times you get focused on, how many know that sometimes they get a tree to really produce, you got to prune it? Right. But they don't realize is that there's a whole lot more going on underneath in the ground. Mm -hmm. Those roots are going down deep. They're getting into that water source, that tree of life. Come on, are y'all with me? Mm -hmm. And so I want to encourage you this morning. Maybe you're going through some things, and God's probably not going to take you out of it if He's growing you up in it, maturing you, and preparing for the next thing. But you can change your perception. Mm -hmm which is going to change your hope, which is going to bring you more joy and peace through the power of the Holy Ghost. Right. And so then you'll start, you know, instead when the devil comes up and goes, do you know what's going on? And you can just go, yeah, you're stupid. <laughs> and you can go, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> What'd you say? Ha, ha, ha. I'm going to die? Ha, ha, ha. You're always going to be that way. Yeah, well... You're always going to be Satan. Uh, I mean, come on. He's lost. 
And listen, let's not anybody pretend that you've never been to this situation we're talking about because everybody in this room has been to where hope has been deferred. If you're not there right now, you've been there, and maybe you're still there. And you know, I'm going to tell you for a long time, because people are preaching this false gospel that says that, you know, God just wants to bless you. And he does, and it's so sad because when people always twist the good stuff. He does want to bless you. He does love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. But there's a roadmap to blessings, and it keeps you out of the curses that makes the blessings flow. Right. And if you follow the roadmap, you get all the good stuff, and he gave you a whole map called the Bible to guide you. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, but uh, people prefer it so much, so that when you start going through something, i got to get a drink of this water. Mm. Boy, that's good. So, whenever when you're going through something, though, you start people start being resentful because they start thinking, "Well, I thought things were supposed to be easier with Jesus." Come on, a lot of people get the wrong attitude. Where, man, this is hard, and God's like, "Man, I'm just trying to bless you and grow you up and make you productive. I'm trying to get you to produce something." But you've got your focus so much on what it's costing you, you have no idea what you're gaining through it. And your hope starts getting deferred. So I came this morning, I believe, with a good message to tell you, if you're in a place where you feel like your hope is deferred, that God has you in you know, a place where he's growing you, he's maturing you, and he's bringing things out of you that you can't even imagine if you'll stay the course. But i got even more good news for you than that. If you'll turn over to Acts 1.8... It's a pretty famous verse, especially for spirit-filled churches. Acts 1.8. It says, But you might, when you're good enough, receive power. Is that what it says? No. No. I'm glad you all, some of y'all is like, what's he talking about? It says, But ye shall. Now, there's no if, and, or but in there, is there? Nope. If I say you shall, it means you will if you want to. It says you shall receive power after it the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Now, I, I don't want to preach a whole doctrine this morning. I don't want to get into things, but you'll see later on where they said they received Jesus, but they hadn't received the Holy Ghost. And... They'd gotten saved and they hadn't received it yet. And so, but we see that something happens when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. When it gets in you, there's a manifestation that comes. And we're going to talk about a few of them, but let me tell you, if you look at this, if you, if you, I have any Bible scholars in here, if you're going home this week, you should circle this and that word power there, almost everybody knows that in the Greek it means dunamis. But if you have a, you can go online or anymore. You can get it pretty much anywhere. Used to, you had to buy the big books. But there's everybody, most people know about the Strong's Concordance, but there's another one called Theres. And it'll break this word down to you, and it'll tell you that you have the influence of riches and wealth through the power of the Holy Ghost. It'll tell you you have the power of an army upon you. You don't have to have the army, but you have the power of through it. And it'll start breaking down all these different things that come through the power of the Holy Ghost. Because I mean, listen, I'm thankful for my prayer language and tongues that I can speak to the Lord. But there's so much more that comes with that package when you start embracing it and letting it come in. Amen. And one of the great things it does is that whenever you start getting... Now listen, did it back over there in Proverbs, it didn't say that you might. So let's just be honest. There's times where the enemy is going to try to defer your hope. You can see it all through the Word of God when he tried. But the great news is, is I want you to remember from this day forward, he can defer it, but he can't deny it. He can never stop it. Only you can be the one to, to cave in the towel. Amen? So, he says that it's power spoken by the Holy Ghost. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. And I want to just say this this morning. It's a little off talk, but I'm going to throw it in. Do you notice it said first in your own backyard, then your own town, then your county, then your state, and then your nation, and then everywhere else? Most people want to go do missions, but they don't want to even talk to their neighbor about Jesus. Amen. That was free. 
So we see here that if you ask, there's power going to come upon you. Everybody, can everybody agree with that this morning? Does that, does that mess up anybody's theology? If it does, you can talk to me afterwards. But so we're talking about hope, right? Romans 15, 13, in case you don't know, I'll tell you a secret. The rest of the church already knows. It's probably one of my most favorite Bible verses in the whole Bible. It says, now the God of hope. Now the God of hope. I'm going to say that again. Now the God of hope. So can you, can Satan stop God? No. But he might be able to defer some things from you seeing fruit come to pass in your life, but he can't stop God because he can't stop hope because hope is God. Come on, are you with me? I can confidently anticipate that God is going to do what he said he's going to do. And then he says, fill you with all joy and peace. So he was talking about up here, when you have some rough times, when you have some things going on in your life, he says, now call out to the God of hope, and then he will fill you with all joy and peace. So in case you haven't been around whenever the Holy Ghost gets moving, let me tell you, that, you know, when, on the day, back when we go back to Acts, and when they stepped out, he said, these aren't drunk as you suppose. Because, listen, I've been drunk in the world, and I've been drunk with the Lord. This one has no hangovers, has no compressions come from it. That's the Holy Ghost. This one you wake up feeling like death. But the thing is, is that, you know, whenever you get drunk, you, you, you just feel happy, full of joy, peace. All those things come through the power of the Holy Ghost also. Except they have no ill side effects. Isn't that good? Because anything the enemy has is just a counterfeit of what God already has. What surprises me, so many people in the, in, the, in the religious world today, I call it religious because they ain't Christians, they want to go have a drink because it makes them feel better, but don't talk to them about the Holy Ghost because that's sacrilege. I'm like, are you crazy? So the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. And what I started to say is they stepped out drunk because when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, there's things that manifest. There's things that happen. So they were probably they were probably laughing. I can just see them having a good time, happy, and they're like, "Man, those guys are drunk, and it's not even it's not even nighttime yet. What is going on? It's still afternoon." Like, These are not drunk as you suppose. So when the God of hope shows up, when He starts filling you back up, so this tells me there is times when you need a fill up. Come on, that means that. Some, some people, we, they get holier or not, as I was filled in 1942, bless God, and I don't need to be filled again. <laughs> well, he said, <laughs> whenever your hope's getting low, when you're going through some things and you're feeling hope deferred, you need to come to the God of hope and let him fill you with joy and peace. Because joy, over and 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 it says over there, uh, I forget, it's either Nahum or Nehemiah, I believe it's Nehemiah 9.10. It says the joy of the Lord is my strength. Nehemiah 1.8? 1.10. I thought it's 1.10. You can look it up. Don't take me at word value. Go look it up your own Bible. But it says the joy of the Lord is my strength. It didn't say it could. It didn't say it might. It said it is. So, do you think, I mean, so first he tries to wear you out and steal your hopes. So you're not confidently anticipating anything. And then he starts draining your joy, which is your strength. And now he's got you like a wimp noodle up on the fence trying to tell you how everything's not going to work out and everything's going to be horrible. Sound familiar? Yes, sir. Yeah. And by the way, you know, you got to take those thoughts captive. You can't let them just roll around in your head. The Bible says, take every thought captive that exalts itself above the mind of Christ. All right? So if it doesn't line up with the Word of God, you've got to take it captive. And so, uh, the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace, believing that you may abound in hope. So, that means you have a part in here. If you want to receive something from the Lord today about this, if you want to break through free from that, that place of hope being deferred,
You're going to have to believe that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. You're going to have to believe that whenever he said, if anybody comes to me, I'll fill them through the power of the Holy Ghost. You're going to have to believe that if you need hope, if you come to me, that I'm going to fill you with joy and peace. I can't believe for you. All I can do is tell you he said it, he meant it, it's truth. The refilling station's open, you know, come get you some. And, it, and for the record, you know, I'm not even the one that has a say. All I got to do is keep my heart clean and life in order so he can flow through me. He's the one that, he's the filling station. Amen. And, you know, there's times when you lay on hands. There's times if you really want it before I get done speaking, the Holy Ghost could be all over you right in your pew, refilling you up, and you could be so wasted, you'd be sliding down the seat going, I don't know what just happened to me. <laughs> be looking over somebody going ha 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 whoa hey joy unspeakable and full of glory I really think he can do and you know what happens when you have those experiences they're great they feel good but you know what they start making those things that seemed impossible to you that your hope was deferred about start feeling really possible when the God of the universe smacks you so much you can't even keep yourself together I'll tell you a personal story. I think it'll help somebody. I can see I got some deep thinkers in here like I used to be. I learned to shut that side of my brain off. But uh, <laughs> years ago, I was uh, I, I had people challenge me. I had a lot of good friends, Baptist doctor, and nothing wrong. I'm still good friends. They're still good. We're still good friends. They're just got filled with the Holy Ghost and afraid to tell their church. But <laughs> they pastor like 600 member church, Baptist churches and that. And so they were constantly challenging me about the Holy Ghost. And I would pray for people and they'd get slain in the Holy Spirit and all those things. And me personally had never been slain. And they kept on challenging me and challenging me. And I'll never forget, most of you know my pastor, Pastor Billy. We are having a prayer line, and it was my job as a young minister. I was catching and doing all those things, and I waited till the end, and we had a special minister in. He was a friend of mine, and I said, I want all that the Lord has for me. And I, so he prayed for me, and I could feel the anointing touching me. And I was still standing there. And so the whole bunch of other people came up, so we went and prayed for all of them again. And I came back, and I said, listen, I just got to know. It's dry. I got to know that I know that this stuff is real. And Pastor Billy said, you're in for it now. <laughs> he told me later when he had his experience like this. <laughs> he said, I was a knucklehead like you too. <laughs> but anyways, they prayed for me and I was sitting there and I wasn't feeling nothing for a minute. And listen, it ain't about feelings, it's about faith. But if you ask God to uh, show you if he's real, I just want to tell you he will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so all of a sudden I felt something and I'm kind of backing up. Backing up, still, I'm still standing up. You know, oh, man, you ain't gonna knock me down. I'm looking to make sure this guy pushing me. You know, <laughs> oh, he was up there, and I was still kind of. <laughs> Next thing I know, I'm blam on the ground, and I'm laughing, and I'm laughing, and I'm laughing. And I remember I was there probably 20 or 30 minutes, and my side was starting to hurt, and I was still laughing. <laughs> And I said, I said I've, I've had about enough. I think I'll get up now. I know this stuff's real. And I felt like the Lord put his foot on the middle of my back. And he said, you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> you ask, we're going to have it right here. We're going to have a come to Jesus moment. You ain't never doing this again. At 1 o'clock in the morning, I was still on the floor laughing uncontrollably. Oh and the Lord was all over me. And they turned the lights off and everything else and just left me there. <laughs> Pastor Billy said, when you get done, come down to the house. We'll have something to eat. <laughs> and then he told me about the time that he did that. And they left him there. He said, oh, that's what they did. Just leave me there. <laughs> and I'm not trying to scare anybody. Some people are so scared of the Holy Ghost that they're like, I ain't doing all that. He did. <laughs> Listen, he would have probably been fine to do it at a slower pace. But I just had to know. And I asked, and he, he made himself evident. Amen. And he'll do it for you. Amen. Now, here's the thing. I can't ask for you. It's by faith that you acquire. But I came to encourage you today, because I believe a lot of you are in some places where hope is deferred. And you just feel like you're just kind of running on the treadmill. Uh -uh. Saying, I'm getting tired. 
Well, that's when you need to have a come to Jesus talk. And you need to, listen, he, he didn't say, when you're about to die, come to me and I'll fill you with through power, with joy and peace through the power of the Holy Ghost. But why as Christians do we wait to like, we're on the last, like, I don't want to tag in yet. I think I can go a little bit longer. He's like, you could have it every day if you wanted. Come on, are you with me? He's like, you can have it every day. We're like, no, I'm fine. Pastor comes up, you doing all right? I'm fine, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> pastor, and Pastor and Si's going, don't, don't lie to me. It might even come out of my mind. Amen. <laughs> you say, what's all this got to do with us this morning? But he said, you may abound in hope. That means he wants to have he wants you to have more than enough hope. That you can't be deferred. How many would like to have enough hope that you couldn't be deferred no more? I mean, he's going to defer you, but you're not going to be wore out. Do you see what I'm saying? And uh, it says, now how is he going to do this? Well, he says, through the power of the Holy Ghost. Y'all realize that's that that's that tongue talking crazy stuff that everybody don't want to admit they have anything to do with, right? I got some people looking at me like, well, he did it now. He, he had me right up till then. And that's okay. Listen, something happened every time they got filled with the Holy Ghost, there was evidence. People want to talk about that. People get so religious about all these things and they put God in such a box and they go read it. Listen, these people, these guys didn't know what they was going to get. They just wanted God. They wanted more of Him, be more filled with the Spirit of God. And there's things that come through it. And the one reason why the enemy is so good is he keeps us wore down, not full of the Spirit of God. And God wants us to be full all the time. You know, when a, that way when a, when a mosquito comes by in the summertime and, 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 and starts trying to suck the blood out of you, he gets to, you know, you're now a, 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 in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says, Behold, all things are passed away, but all things new. You become a new creation in Christ. Now you get some of that DNA of Jesus, you know. <laughs> he starts going, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> and he shows up to the mosquito buddies. Woo! You're flying in circles. Yeah, I got the good stuff. <laughs> You be happy. <laughs> and I can't tell you how many people that I've got to... And listen, I understand. There's, 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 there's people here that it took years to get them before they were willing to say, I want it all, because they'd seen all the flakes, quakes, and everything else in between. And they thought that, and then they also thought the Lord was going to shove something on them. He'll only, he's a gentleman for the record. He'll only give what you want. Amen. <laughs> I used to have some, they'd be like, they'd be watching when you're praying, and, you know. It was funny when they started feeling it, you know, and they'd see that I've just got a fingertip on and be like, woo. But, you know. yeah. but uh, why are you saying all this, preacher? Because I believe that, you know, sometimes you just need to have a meeting with the Holy Ghost and get and get a touch from God. And some people say, well, that's awful bold. You better hope the Holy Ghost shows up. Well, we just read the scriptures where he said it's for everybody as far as a far off. Anybody can have it that ask. So I don't really think it's on me to perform. Amen. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> if you don't know what that is, if you're new, it's okay. I'm not trying to work anything up. It's just manifesting upon me. It's what the, what the Word is called. And it's the joy of the Lord because God wants to flow it out on you. <laughs> and listen, He's a gentleman. And he affects it affects people different ways. Nobody's trying to tell you how to respond. I'm just telling you probably need some. Come on, I'm telling you, you probably need to just have a really big drink with the Lord and let Him fill you. And start spending some time alone with Him and seeking His face. Because we have an enemy of our soul and He wants to wear you out. Just wear you plumb out. And you start, because if you start thinking, well, it should, it might, it could, you're moving out of hope and you're moving out of faith. 
Amen. Amen. I am healed. I am, you know, it's funny. I won't go into things. It's not worth it. I'm, I'm getting over some <laughs> things, and that knucklehead starts doing other things, trying to attack and slow me down. Well, I got news for him. I'm about to buy my plane, my plane ticket, and somebody say, "Well, you know, what, you, what if you can't walk over? Well, then I'll, I, I will hobble. <laughs> I will, I will make my way. And by the way, if you ain't been to some of them airports, they're huge. I mean, you're talking miles between one thing to the other, and and you're dragging your stuff, and you know, you, you almost got to be Olympian just to make it on time, you know. <laughs> Full, full run, dragging those bags. You're like, whoo. Because I'm going to be in Africa the last week of May. I'm going. I, I'm not fully restored, but I'm going there. What is the thing you're believing for? What is the thing you have hope for that you're going to make it? Maybe it's sickness, spiritual relationships, jobs, finances. What is that thing that you're putting your hope in Jesus Christ for? What is it? Do you have it? Or are you just coasting? Does it, is it God's plan or your plan? That's probably a better place to start. Now listen, God's plan is never for you to have sickness, for the record. That's from the enemy, period. But <laughs> I know some people, they're, like, they're believing for a spouse. And Jesus says, let's start with the job. Because <laughs> the Bible says to prepare your house for your mate. I didn't write it. I'm just talking about it. That means make everything right for them. Amen? <coughs> Y'all with me? <laughs> and listen, I know there's some guys in here that are just starting over. What a, ain't no better place to be than starting over sometimes. You got a, you got a brand new chance to do it all the right way. <coughs> and God's a restoration from Genesis to Revelation. Come on. As he's all about it. So you got a grand opportunity. Listen, and oh Holy Ghost. <laughs> Paul, for some of you, you still keep concentrating on the past, and you just need to flush it. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know what that means, Paul, he he wrote they some say he wrote 13 books in the New Testament. He was a pretty smart feller. And he said the greatest thing he figured out was forgetting the things behind and pressing on towards the mark of the high calling of Jesus Christ. And he said he counts all those things behind where the good or bad is dung. Does everybody know what dung is? Okay. Yeah. So it's horse pooping, you know, except it ain't the horse. So... One time, God asked me. See, somebody in here, is, God, the enemy's really using it to defer your hope because you keep thinking about how you could have, should have done something in the past, right? Well, listen, you can't do anything about the past, but you can do a whole lot about the future. And God asked me something, and the enemy always wants to bring it up and have you rethink it, rehash it, and he uses it to steal your hope. But see, the Apostle Paul says, uh, forget those things. And, and God asked me, he said, when you get up in the morning and you do your business and you flush that toilet, do you go around all day wondering where that stuff went? <laughs> so why in the world are you trying to figure out where that stuff? The Bible says he cast it as far as the east is from the west, never to be remembered again. You flushed it, leave it there. Right. And, he, and if you want even grosser image, he said, he, he said people are going out and getting it back out and playing with it. That's gross. Wow. <laughs> 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 And then they wonder why they stinketh. <laughs> My attitude stinks. My joy stinks. It'll make you stink. <laughs> now you all know I said, oh, Holy Ghost. <laughs> but you know, there's times when you just got to get along with the Lord. And you got to pray through, and you you got to get a hold and say, God, you said <laughs> you would fill me with all joy and peace through the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm right here, <laughs> and God, I need to fill it. And then don't be shocked when he starts coming up on you. You're like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Woo! Somebody said, what's wrong with you? Oh, nothing. I've just been spending some time with Jesus. 
It looks like you've been spending some time at the bar. It's funny. I, people. I had a cousin. He was a sergeant in the police force and had a big revival meeting. Got moved and hundreds got saved. And the power of the Holy Ghost was falling. I went up to the 24-hour grocery store to get me a soda afterwards on the way home. One of his police buddies called him and said, I think your cousin might be inebriated. In He's... He seems a little whatever. He said, no, he's just been having time with Jesus. <laughs> True story. I don't know why the Lord's doing all this this morning, honestly. Preaching different than I normally do. But listen. And then he goes, I am also... I myself also am persuaded of you, my brother, that you also are full of goodness and filled with all knowledge, able to admonish one another. See, there's times when you need to encourage one another. There's times when you need to spur each other on. When you see a brother and a sister that's struggling, you see hope deferred, you say, hey, my God is able. Maybe you share a testimony about a time God saw you through. Maybe you'll just get along with them and say, hey, let's just pray right now. God's a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. He said if we seek Him, well, he'll, he'll come. Let's just pray the Holy Ghost meets us right here. But then what happens is people start thinking, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tell them a bunch of y'all. Even this morning you're thinking about, well, if I go up there, but I don't, what if, what if something happens? Well, the whole point is something happening. <laughs> what if I can't control it? Well, if you can control it, it's probably not God. Amen. <laughs> And then you're like, what if we get on and, and we're praying and the Holy Ghost shows up? What are we going to do then? I don't know. Have church right there. <laughs> if you're more worried about what the world thinks about you, that's the one way you're still in your hope. Yeah. Come on. I'm about done. See, I didn't have no sermon notes. I didn't even have a scripture written down. How many believe that if you just ask the Lord that He would meet you right in your, right where you're at today? Amen. How many could how many could use to uh, be filled of the Holy Ghost? Amen. 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 Now listen. <laughs> There's a difference from Him being on you and in you, Amen. and He He'll get on anybody that asks today. And if you really want to get a hold of Him, He'll even get in you if you ask. <laughs> Amen. Come on. It's a simple message this morning. I pre it ain't like it's the first time I've ever preached on hope. I love preaching on hope. What's better than hope? And, and I'm not talking about that wishful kind like getting down New Harley, you know. Man, if I could find, you know, I, I, that Mark 11, 22 through 24 says, whosoever say whatever they ask in faith. But uh, some preacher, me, always says that it has to line up with the Word of God. I can't find believing for that Harley in there. I just can't get it. <laughs> Maybe somebody online is watching. <laughs> My birthday's coming. It comes once a year regardless. <laughs> hey, it's okay to laugh. You know that? I give you permission to laugh. It's, you just said you want, want some. That's kind of the manifestation of the Holy Ghost if you start feeling that bubbling up. How many are starting to feel a little happier than you was when you got here? Amen. Starting to feel that weight lift. How many know the peace of God that passes all understanding? Amen. Listen, it's powerful. It changes things. You start going from I think I can to I know I can. Amen. Because who Jesus is in me. Amen. You know, if it was up to me... I, I would have never made it this far. <laughs> but I'm so thankful I tapped into the Lord. Amen. I tapped into the Holy Ghost. You know, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. But that knucklehead sure had a million different types he keeps trying to throw. <laughs> and I keep standing going, ha, 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 ha. I'm still here. <laughs> I'm still here. Ha, 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 ha. Some of you really need that this morning. Don't you? Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you just you just need it. 
You don't even know it, you're wound up tighter than a $2 clock. The Lord says, I just want you to let go. Let go. <laughs> let go. You say, why are they laughing? Well, that's, remember, we've been talking about it for the last 45 minutes. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't surprise you. I told you it's what happened when the Holy Ghost came, remember? Because they, they came asking, aren't those people drunk? Miss <laughs> Shauna here, she's like, a, I've already had enough, Pastor. Move on to somebody else. <laughs> And see, I want to tell you, something happens when you start laughing. The Bible says that laughter doeth good like a medicine. Do you think it's coincidence that he said you had to be filled through the Holy Ghost and joy and peace was going to be part of it, that the joy of the Lord is your strength and laughter doeth good like a medicine? Do you think there's any reason why the enemy wants you to look around like walk around like you've been sucking on persimmons all day? <laughs> like hope gone, everything gone. You look like you're some of the frozen chosen. <laughs> Peter doing that laughing stuff again. Bless God. <laughs> right, look at her. That's almost fear in her eyes. Did you see that? <laughs> the Holy Ghost will only do what you want. <laughs> And see, you want to know how you can tell us the Holy Ghost? It's because they're trying to be respectful right now. <laughs> they're trying to be quiet. Just ask them. Well, they could, they could they talk if they could. <laughs> Nobody's working it up. It's, it's, some of you are feeling it come up in you. Pam's going past it. Don't go. Come over here. <laughs> That piece is good stuff. <laughs> hey, he's here right now in case you ain't figured it out. All you got to do is just reach out and grab a hold of him. And that all of those things that have been wearing you out are going to break off. <laughs> Hope's going to start flooding in. You're going to say, I, I know I can. My God. He's a rewarder. For those that diligently see, Shana gonna be in the floor anyway. <laughs> well, I'm not controlling the volume. <laughs> and I'm about to open up the altar, but I I want to tell you I, I want I want to encourage some of y'all's faith that you can. <laughs> You can get it right where you're at. Some of you are starting to get it. And you're like, and you're feeling so all that brokenness. It's like coming to the top and coming on out. And you're like, woo! <laughs> it's exiting out. Some of you are still looking like the jury's still out. <laughs> You're in the room. They didn't slip no pills. They ain't been having no drink. And I ain't do nothing but touch them. And we just read in the Word of God and we saw that happen. So you're going to have to get your brain to rationalize it. This is probably God. And can you see where God would want you to laugh and build yourself up? Can you see that? Will you... Because there's something that happens when you start laughing at, <laughs> at the uh, impossible. <laughs> and some of you need to laugh at the impossible this morning. You need to go, hey, God, I'm here. Right here, God. Come and fill me this morning. Holy Ghost, we just loose you to have your way today, but you're a gentleman, so he'll only go to those that want him. Lord, let the anointing flow, God, right now. Fill them full of joy and peace Woo! through the power of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and
And if you you want special prayer, I'll pray for you. I know we got some that want healing. We're going to do that in a moment. But if you like, I just want more of the Holy Ghost. You can come on down. Now's the time. I would come quickly. The, 